How's everyone doing? Today I have a horror and Halloween collection update with some uh, movies and TV shows and some awesome monster serials right here. <laughs> if you've seen any of these movies or TV shows, definitely let me know what you think of them and let me know which one of these pickups is your favorite. And let me know if you've ever tried any of these uh, monster serials before. And if you have, let me know which one is your favorite. Uh, all of these monster cereals are out again right now, except for Yummy Mummy. So you've got Frankenberry, uh, you've got Fruit Brute, Boo Berry, and Count Chocula. And I'm getting uh, Fruit Brute and Count Chocula, which are the two best in my opinion. And I just love these. Uh, it brings me back to my childhood. They don't taste the greatest, I'm going to be honest. They have that kind of like cardboard taste. And I remember as a kid, I would save the marshmallows at the end. Uh, and you kind of suffer through the, the crunchy cereal parts and the marshmallows would be my treat. But they were just fun to see. Um, this is from an artist called Cause, which I don't know what's going on with all this new artwork. You know, uh, there's the McDonald's uh, cactus flea market uh, or cactus plant flea market, I think is what it is. And they have those weird Happy Meal figures where the Happy Meals are like 16 bucks and you get a grimace with four eyes. Um, the well, same thing kind of here too. They, they take something that's already, uh, you know, cultural phenomena and then they just do like one or two things and it's art. Uh, I don't get it. Like for this one right here, Count Dracula has X's on his eyes and then like, I don't know, potatoes or something on his ears. I don't know what that's supposed to be, but I don't know. I'm not really, uh, into that kind of art, uh, or the cactus plant flea market either for McDonald's. And they're like trying to promote like their McDonald's clothing line through them and like a hoodie was like $165 or something crazy to that effect. Um, I feel like that's not the right demographic for uh, most people picking up McDonald's, uh, but you know, Happy Meals and dollar menu stuff, but the yeah, fruit root has the X's in the eyes. So uh, I mean, I could have done this when I was two, put X's and I could have been a famous artist. Is that what you're telling me? Uh, I don't get the appeal. Um, I had to look up why they had the X's and I saw this guy does this for, you know, all kinds of different characters, Simpsons, Mickey Mouse, and he's famous and his artwork sells for money for just taking something that's already drawn and putting X's on it. And that's mind blowing to me uh, for the eyes. And then I guess sometimes he puts them on the hands. You don't really see that, I guess, on the hands here. But uh, either way, it's cool to see these out. Uh, and I guess some people will collect it for the art aspect, too. And I use the word art very loosely. I guess anything can be art, but... Um, these cereals are awesome. Um, let me know who your favorite Universal Monster character is and your favorite Universal Monster movie because they might be different. Uh, but yeah, these are definitely my favorite of the Universal or the Monster cereals rather uh, from General Mills. Uh, it's cool to see them out again, even with the weird artwork. Uh, that's just something I, I was like, why do they have the X's? Are they dead? Like on the eyes? Like I just, I don't know, I didn't get it. But you can win a, a Cause Monster prize too uh, on the back here. So um that's something too i think they're just like little figures or something perhaps i feel like i've seen somebody post about that um but again it's cool to see these cereals out bring back yummy mummy too although i think yummy mummy is like the worst tasting one but it's cool to see them all together uh next up let's get into the movies and tv shows uh we've got mortal kombat legends snowblind uh, this is a 4k release now initially like i didn't consider mortal kombat to be like horror more like action sure it's bloody and stuff like that but um, the animated movies are bloody as heck. And so for this one in particular, I would definitely put it in the horror realm. You're seeing people's like heads explode, people getting like run over and like shot in the face and blood splatter everywhere. It's wild. And Kano is this super powerful overlord in here. Uh, so yeah, Shang Tsung is actually, uh, under his thumb essentially. And he doesn't like that. And so he's trying to take Kano down, but uh, there's a bunch of other characters in here and it's uh, pretty formulaic, but it's actually really cool. There's, you know, a big training montage. This guy loses his sight and he, you know, has to work with other people to take down Kano. Uh, so it was actually, you know, there's a, it's a post-apocalyptic world that they're living in now and there's Revenant characters um, and you get to see a bunch of other characters in the Mortal Kombat universe and realm. And these animated ones, I think, are better than a lot of the live action ones. Uh, I like the old school one back in the day, but it it's not too great. And then Annihilation was terrible. And the recent uh, live action one was a mixed bag. But these animated ones are really good, especially Scorpion's Revenge. That's the best of the bunch. 
And then I would like, uh, I think this one would be second for me. And then there's another one, uh, Legends, uh, something about the, in the realm, I think it was called. That was my least favorite of the three animated ones. Um, 2020, 21, and now 22. So each year they've had an animated one. And again, I would highly recommend the animated Mortal Kombat movies, especially if you're into the Mortal Kombat like, universe. But Scorpion's Revenge and Snowblind are definitely uh, the best of the trio. Uh, and some special features right here. This is a release from uh, Warner Brothers. But yeah, really cool to see these different characters, uh, especially Kano. Kano was badass in this one. Uh, and you get to find out how he has such power. Uh, but yeah, really good um, action pack, bloodiness, uh, great fight sequences and different, you know, uh, fights and uh, just cool characters too. Uh, and just uh, cool to see the expansion of this universe. And I want to see more of these animated Mortal Kombat movies. Good voice acting too. Uh, but yeah, really cool with this one. And it's a 4K release. We'll have a Blu-ray release too. Uh, next up is Dexter. This is the complete original series and then A New Blood. Uh, I haven't seen any of Dexter, but I know uh, the original series was super popular, but I heard a lot of people complain about the final season. But I heard people complain about uh, the Game of Thrones final season, and I thought that was one of the better seasons of that show. Not necessarily how it ended, but that season, especially, uh, you know, the White Walkers and all that, like, people were complaining that was dragged out. I thought that was, I feel like it could have been the whole season of that, but um, I don't know. There are certain seasons where I definitely understand, like, How I Met Your Mother, big fan of that show, but that whole season was terrible, and the ending was a slap in the face to fans, but... Um, I've heard great things about this one, but again, people complaining about the final season, but maybe they're being too critical. Uh, it's hard to get, you know, a finale right for a huge popular show. I feel like there's very few shows that got the series finale right. Like Sons of Anarchy is one of the few ones. Uh, The Shield is another one where it was very fitting. And then I heard good things about New Blood as well, but now I'm going to check this whole franchise out. Uh, he's like a police officer who's also a serial killer from what I know. And then uh, Michael C. Hall is the lead actor. And I always used to get his name confused with Anthony Michael Hall. <laughs> uh, obviously very similar, but very different actors. Uh, but yeah, this is a big release right here from Showtime. And I'll do an unboxing review of this one coming up soon. Let me know if you've seen Dexter. And let me know what your favorite horror TV show is outside of, uh, you know, Tales from the Crypt. That's, you know, one that I grew up on as a kid. There's actually another one here that I'm going to put in that realm too. Uh, I'll, I'll say that in a minute, but 106 episodes over three hours of special features. So just a ton of special features right here as well. And looking forward to delving into that one. Let me know if you've seen Dexter, uh, the original and New Blood. Let me know what you think of New Blood. Let me know what you think of the final season of the original series too. Is it as bad as people made it out to be? Um, some people, I've heard some people just, I feel it's hyperbole when they're saying like it ruins the show, the final season. Ah, I can't, I don't know. I don't want to believe that. Um, next up is The Twilight Zone. This is another one, too. Like, I feel like this falls into sci-fi, but also horror uh, for a lot of episodes, too. Uh, if you're a fan of the original Twilight Zone, that's my uh, one of my all-time favorite TV shows, my second favorite show of all time. Let me know what your favorite episode of the original Twilight Zone is. For me, it's uh, Will the Real Martian Please Stand Up. Love that one so friggin' much. And there's been several iterations of this series. This is the new one hosted by Jordan Peele. I haven't seen any of these episodes yet. Heard a lot of mixed reviews, but I feel like a lot of the negative reviews I heard were more for, you know, political reasons and uh, stuff like that, which I feel like is kind of unfair. Uh, I feel like in this day and age, it's expected that there's going to be some social political commentary in movies and TV shows. Um, sometimes it may be a little too heavy handed and overt. I can understand that. But uh, to base it just solely on one or two things, I feel like is unfair. Uh, and I see some people you know, criticizing things and saying woke and stuff like that, which I, I hate that term altogether. But um, I feel like it's unfair because I feel like they're letting their political alignment and beliefs just overshadow everything else about the movie or TV show. Um, so I try to base it on the merits of the show. And it looks like it's going to have a great cast in here, though. Uh, it looks like Greg Kinnear, Topher Grace. Uh, is that Joel McHale? Uh, just a ton of uh, recognizable people in here. So... I'm trying to see it's all 20 episodes and a bunch of special features on here too. Uh, remembering Rod Serling, so that's pretty cool. But yeah, here's a bunch of the people that says right there, Tracy Morgan, Ugh, not a big fan. I met him once. Uh, <laughs> he was, I saw him at my local comedy club, including another actor, which I'll talk about in a minute. 
but uh, Tracy Morgan, he actually got into a big accident over here and he was in the hospital like right down the street from me, but I met him before that happened and uh, he was like wasted. Uh, my date and I got to the comedy club late and we got uh, seated right by like the green room. He came out, sat down at our table, started talking to us. His entourage smelled like Bob Marley and they were hitting on uh, the girls next to us. And uh, uh, my uh, the girl I went with and I were just like kind of shocked by how like wasted he was and just kind of obnoxious uh then he got up on stage and he couldn't remember like uh the club owner's name and just every other word was a curse word i just felt really cringy and i don't know i feel like a lot of uh comedians when every other word is a curse word and sometimes these you know modern comedy movies do the same thing i just feel like it it just feels juvenile and just forced and cringy and awkward uh the whole crowd just felt like they were just I don't know, there was like young, younger kids in the audience too. And it just, uh, it was rough to sit through that one. And I just, I don't think he's that funny. So, um, I don't know. He's, I feel like he's in a lot of stuff and I just don't get it. I don't get Melissa McCarthy either. There's a lot of people I don't get that are just pushed, uh, constantly. And I know he's, there was going to be, you know, um, a sequel to twins. It was going to be triplets. Originally Eddie Murphy was going to be in there, but now he's not. Now it's going to be Tracy Morgan. And I feel like that's terrible. You're going to have Arnold, Dan DeVito, and then Tracy Morgan. One of these do not belong as far as popularity. That Eddie Murphy is on a whole nother level of, than Tracy Morgan. But you also have uh, Seth Rogen here, Jillian Jacobs, Adam Scott, uh, Damon Wayans Jr., uh, Joel McHale, John Cho, uh, Chris O'Dowd, a bunch of people in here. But uh, over two and a half hours of special features too. And these are uh, releases uh, from, uh, this one right here is another uh, Paramount and Showtime. And this one is uh, Paramount and CBS. And this is a DVD only release on this one. And this is a Blu-ray and then we'll also have a DVD release for it too. And then I've got one more uh, movie in here. And let me know too, would you consider Mortal Kombat horror? Like I used to always consider it action. And sure it was, you know, bloody and over the top. Uh, but now like these animated ones make me actually feel like they're horror because just all the violence, all the kills and blood, it's wild. Scorpion's Revenge and this one are like two of the more bloody animated movies uh, I've seen. So uh, next up is uh, Bodies, Bodies, Bodies. This is a Blu-ray release that will have a 4K release. And um, yeah, this looks like it's going to be ridiculous and kind of like almost uh, a satirical take on like uh, Gen Z meltdown, essentially like Gen Z people and just... Uh, uh, I don't know, bloggers and people like that. Uh, Pete Davidson, I got to meet him uh, before SNL days at the local comedy club uh, that I used to go to all the time. I uh, haven't gone to that much uh, recently, but um, yeah, he was really cool and funny. And uh, I got a picture with him and he signed the poster. Uh, there was like uh, one of the, like, the posters of everybody performing. It was like guy code and girl code, which I never saw. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. It was a fun time with all the people there and he was good and uh, then he blew up and now he's like everywhere dating uh, Kim K. Wild. Uh, but yeah, so this is not a safe space. I think that's actually, you know, playing into that parody of Gen Z and everything like that. Uh, so it's a bunch of rich 20 somethings uh, stuck in a remote family mansion during a hurricane. They play this like uh, uh, like murder mystery game and then suddenly people start dying and they're trying to figure out who the killer is, that kind of stuff. You also have Amanda Sternberg, who I actually really like. Uh, she was She's been great in everything I've seen her in, but uh, The Hate You Give was a really good one. Um, kind of talks about the, um, you know, racial injustice and complexities of that nature and stuff. But I thought it was really well done. And uh, there's there's a few like that in that realm over the past few years, but that's definitely one of the better ones. Uh, but yeah, this is uh, another uh, one with Pete Davidson. I feel like he's been in a bunch of movies and even more coming up. Uh, and I feel like he plays usually the stereotypical role every time, like, kind of like the stoner slacker character. Uh, but yeah, this one looks like it's going to be entertaining. It looks like it's going to be like horror comedy, people getting killed and then kind of making fun of, you know, the Gen Z generation and stuff like that. And uh, I've got some uh, special features right there. And this is a release from um, A24 and Lionsgate. Let me know what your favorite A24 movie is. A24 is very like mixed bag for me, hit or miss. But they always have interesting ideas and concepts, which I definitely appreciate. Uh, so I'm looking forward to checking this one out. I'll be watching this one soon. Uh, so there you go. Those are the pickups. We've got a couple TV shows, a couple movies. Uh, and I feel like these Mortal Kombat anime movies fly under the radar, but they're definitely worth checking out. Again, especially the two that I mentioned. Uh, this one right here is Snowblind and then Scorpion's Revenge. Scorpion's Revenge is freaking awesome. Love that one. This one's really good, too. 
Uh, and then these awesome, uh, you know, monster cereals from uh, uh, General Mills. They're a fun time. They're not the greatest tasting cereals, but again, I think these are the two best ones. But let me know what you think uh, if you've had them. Uh, but they're just nostalgic for me, and they're just awesome uh, to see these characters. And uh, I feel like uh, it's interesting to see it with this uh, artist, but uh, something unique, I guess. Uh, let me know what you think of that aspect, too. Uh, I guess it's, you know, some people consider it a collector's item. Um, so there's that. But there you go. Those are all of the horror and Halloween pickups. Um, I'm doing these 31 days of Halloween. You can check out my uh, playlist for that and, uh, you know, see maybe some videos on here you might have missed from me and uh, look forward to more videos coming up in the future. So there you go. I'll be doing a lot more horror and Halloween related videos coming up soon. Uh, I love this time of year, all kinds of great spooky foods and pumpkin flavored everything. I'm a basic bro, so I like all the pumpkin flavored stuff. Uh, and then seeing these awesome cereals out again, really cool. But uh, look forward to a lot more of these videos coming up and I hope everybody's doing well. Take care and keep it spooky.